Hi friends, and welcome back to my crafty space. If this is your first time here, my name is Crystal Idunyate, and this is a place where I share my memory keeping projects and processes with all of you. Today, I am already jumping back into a traveler's notebook album that I am creating as a gift for my mother. So if you missed the first part of this video, this is actually part two. Uh, so if you want to check out part one before watching this one, go ahead and hit pause on your video and go check out part one in my, uh, it'll be in my traveler's notebook playlist. Otherwise, um, welcome back and uh, I hope you guys are ready to hang out and put some more pages together. So this first page that I'm working on right here is a photo of my mom and my dad um, standing on a boardwalk like overlooking the water. This was a trip that they took to Sagatuck with some of our really good family friends. Uh, it's one of my dad's best friends and his wife. They're virtually aunts and uncles or pseudo grandparents to my children even. So I am leafing through this little bin of cardstock ephemera, like, um, what do I want to say it? The, I guess just ephemera, right? Ephemera pieces. So those are from the Pink Fresh Studio Out and About collection that was designed by In a Creative Bubble, which works perfectly because most of the cards that I'm using or the Traveler's Notebook papers that I am using are also designed by In a Creative Bubble, so it all just kind of goes together. So many of the papers that I am using were actually three by four journaling cards that I altered to make them into, um, they're 4.25 inches wide by 8.25 inches tall, so that is the size of a standard traveler's notebook. Then for this spread in particular, I am going to create a flip up with a couple of smaller photos um, I, right now what I'm doing is pulling out some, just some like sp spare, um, scrap cardstock and I'm cutting a piece that will be roughly three inches wide by roughly two inches, uh, high. And I'm just going to score that in half and I'm going to use that to create my flip up. This was a technique that my friend Tashiana, she is Tashiana Gordon on YouTube that she uses with her flip ups and she's like the flip up queen um, and and genius because before this I used to use washi and nothing against washi tape it's just that it's a little bit more feeble <laughs> so I worry about it tearing or losing stickiness over time this method is wonderful because I don't have to worry about that it's on there solid and yeah I just don't have to worry about it so I used that scored piece of cardstock to create this flip up and you'll see how it functions. I think I will flip it. Yep, there you go. Um, and it's going to go roughly in the middle of that paper right there. And I definitely know that the let's go, what does it say? My fingers, you know, of course, totally in the way. Let's get lost. <laughs> it says let's get lost. That is for sure going to go down in the corner there. I like it there. So now what I am deciding uh, is what I want to stamp and where. I know I want something on that photo of my dad and um, and his friend. And I kind of want something underneath it. Like to me, that space is a little too bare. It could be a good place to put some journaling potentially, but since I have a journaling card underneath the flip, like it doesn't, it's not necessary for journaling. So this one, I don't know, it, it gave me some trouble, like trying to figure out if and what I wanted to put there. Funny enough, I, you know, I do end up putting something there. I was thinking that I didn't, but I do. I, I eventually find something, but it, it literally takes me forever to figure it out. So in the meantime, I'm pulling out these tab stickers. These are from Illustrated Faith. I originally got them from Michael's when they were on super clearance. I don't know if they discontinued them because I can't find them. <laughs> I looked on scrapbook.com and Illustrated Faith website and I just, I can't find them. Um, Dayspring might, they might be available on Dayspring. So maybe I need to check that out. 
What I like about them is that it's a sticker, so you fold it in half, but I also add a staple and I use my tiny attacher to do that just to solidify that it is going to stay on that photo and it's not going to fall off. So you saw me do that. I chose this arrow just because it seemed appropriate with adventure and all of that. So this gave me a laugh. I pulled out this stamp set. It is uh, to the beach, I think, from Studio Calico. And I pulled out that Paradise Found stamp. I originally thought of putting it on the picture of my dad and his friend. But then I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That, that might not be like super appropriate <laughs> since, you know, they're just good buddies. And instead, I decided to put it on the picture of my dad and my mom, which makes a lot more sense. And then I had another stamp from a Feature Craft stamp set. Um, I cannot recall what it's what the title of it is. It's something to do with family. I will definitely link it down below. Uh, but it says like good friends and great adventures, and that was much more suitable for this picture. So I stamped that on there. It says yeah, good friends and great adventures. Um. And then that Paradise Found I will do on the photo of my mom. So the black ink that I used was a scrapbook.com premium dye ink. And this white ink that I will be using is, um, oh my gosh, I'm lost for words right now. It is, hold on, I'm going to pull it out and see if I, Brilliance, there you go. <laughs> it's Brilliance Moonlight White. Um, it's a really great white ink for using on dark photos. It does show up pretty nicely. It might not be like stark white. It's almost kind of iridescent in a way, but I like that look. And to me, as long as I can read the stamp and it's bold enough that I can see it, that works for me. So there's that. I did pull over a scrap when I was working on it just because I was worried the ink wasn't dry yet and I didn't want to get it on my workspace. So I put a piece of scrap underneath just in case. And now I am back to that awkward space below my photo. Like what do I do? So again, humming and hawing and looking at this little puffy sticker sheet, which is also from the Pinkfresh Studio out and about collection. And then I will pull over a couple of stamp sets to see if any of those go there nicely enough. Uh, and then I decide to pull another one out of my stash. This one is from Ellie's studio and I will end up stamping that location, location stamp just on plain white cardstock with the intention of fussy cutting it out and putting it in there. And I figured that way they could, you know, at least journal the location of where they were. But then after I do it and after I kind of place it on there, I decide I don't like the scripty font when the A at the top where it says adventure is worthwhile is its own kind of scripty font. So I will pull out these two inks and I stamped the first one. The first one ends up being the right match. I was looking for something that would be close enough to the color of the adventure is worthwhile. So that way it blends in. Um, like it's not too bold. It's not bringing in another color onto this page since I already have the greens and the blues and the oranges. I didn't really want any other color on here. So there you see. So I've got the location stamp down there. And I don't know, the, the scripty font with the font of the A in Adventure just clashed for me. So I decided that that is not going to work. So instead, I pull out a different stamp set. This one will be from Studio Calico. And if it's the one I'm thinking, oh yeah, first I'm going to go through the tags. These tags were also another product through the Out and About uh, Pinkfresh Studio line. So I'm going to pull over the Studio Calico stamp set here in just a second. I think it's Studio Calico. Let's see if I'm right here. And it basically is just a label. It's just a, a small label. It's got a compass on it. Yep, right there. So uh, what is this one? I think this one is called, for me, it was called Explorer when I first got it, but then they brought it back again. So it is currently available in the shop and it has a new name, like Choose Adventure, I think is the name of it now. 
I will link that down below so you guys don't have to <laughs> figure that out. I'll figure it out. I'm pretty sure it's Choose Adventure. So I'm going to stamp that label in the same green ink. And that ink is not Lucky Clover. It's archival, first of all. It's an archival ink. And let me look it up. It is called Library Green. So I really like archival inks. They have... Um, I don't know, they're really true to color based on what you see on the container, on like the, the lid of it, and they just stamp really solidly. So I like them. I like them a lot. I will say that they are, I, I can never remember if they're a dye ink or a pigment ink or, or what like type of ink they are. All that I know is that they will stain your stamp um, when you use the ink. So don't be afraid of stamping with it and then when it comes out and it's stained they do that but it won't it won't affect whether it will work again like you can totally keep using the stamp and it won't cause any problems it'll just look the stamp itself will look slightly discolored so I'm going to stick that on there and then I will also like fluff around and try to find a puffy sticker to put on the pa on the picture with my mom and my dad, that large picture, just because I want something to help balance it out. Uh, I felt like just that one embellishment wasn't enough. And so I will pick a gray puffy sticker that says go right there, and I'll just layer it on top of the blue one. So these pages are done, and I'm just going to get them adhered inside of my album. What I like to do with my traveler's notebooks is I like to work on my pages like this. So have my journaling card basically take up the entire page and then my picture take up the entire page. And then I will use score tape. I just skipped over a lot. Actually, I lost some of my footage, so, but I did skip over some of the tape. I will apply score tape to the back of them and then just stick those into the book itself. And uh, now this page, I have another, another full size picture. And this one is of our family friends in the same spot as my parents. It's just, you know, a different couple. And I've got a journaling card next to them that says stories. And it's got that pink, it's like a pinky color. I liked it because, um, the, uh, there's a, there's a sweater. So she's wearing a sweater in that picture that is like slightly pink in color as well. And so I just felt like it pulled, it pulled her outfit out of that picture and made your eye go to the couple, um, more immediately, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So then when I went to the embellishments, I picked out that pink flag, uh, and put that on there. So now I've got three points of pink on this spread and it will draw your eye from the left side of the spread to the right side of the spread. I also grabbed some other puffy stickers to put up by the title. I'm going to leave the rest of that page pretty blank because it's going to be for journaling. I am giving this album as a gift and this was for a trip that I did not attend. So what I am doing here is just providing areas for journaling and then once I give the album to my mom she can fill in the stories with her own memories that's what I like to do I like to do either that or I will um, like send a questionnaire to the recipient and have them fill that out and then I will adapt their question or their answers into journaling for their albums I really like to do it that way because then we're assured that their stories are getting told. Whereas, you know, if you give a blank album like this, there's the possibility that they will never fill it out. But I'm going to run that risk this time. <laughs> so this stamp right here is again from the, um, what did I call it? Choose Adventure <laughs> stamp set. I print, or I stamped it onto vellum because I wanted it to stand out from the tree background. And because I stamped on vellum, I needed to let it rest for a second or for a few minutes before I cut it out and put it on. That way the ink could dry 
completely. And um, then I used my tiny attacher to staple it to the top. I don't like to use adhesive on the back side of vellum just because you can see through to the adhesive wherever it touches the vellum. So instead I just staple it on. Plus it adds a little bit of extra texture. So this is where I am adhering those down to the page. You'll also notice that the pages I'm working with are not attached. <laughs> like they're not inside of a book and that is on purpose. At the end of this process of putting together this album, I will actually stitch the entire book together. In past projects, I have stapled them at the onset. So I have like put the staples in at the beginning and um, they end up pulling out because they get too, it just gets too bulky and it can't handle it. So I have decided when I put together my traveler's notebooks to just leave my pages like loose and then once the album is complete I'll just sew it together. So you'll notice that the lighting is a lot brighter. That is because I went to bed. <laughs> so all of the the beginning pages of this album I did in one night while my husband was just playing a game on the computer. And then the next day I woke up bright and early while my son was still sleeping and I came down and finished the rest of it. So this page right here is a picture of my mom eating ice cream. I really liked this card that says for the record. Again, it's in a creative bubble. I just liked that it was bright and vibrant next to her. Um, sunny, you know, it's sunny and she looks like she's in a location that is very sunny. So then I pulled out this stamp that says best in town. That's the one that's on the back of the little circle um, stamp block. And then I also grabbed out the speech bubble embellishments from the Pink Fresh Studio ephemera pack. And I'm just going to put them around her head on that photo. So I will use my scrapbook.com um, premium dye ink to just stamp on my photos. It works perfectly for me. This ink is, I don't know, it's just really great and it it stamps bold and I probably say this in every, every video I make, but I love it. So <laughs> if you're on the fence, I say give it a try. And then I'm going to put these down. Another thing I like to do is put my um, <laughs> these tiny embellishments on a piece of scrap because I don't want to get tape on my table <laughs> because sometimes it doesn't come off and then I have a sticky spot forever and who wants that so there we go so it's just around her head I gave myself a thumbs up <laughs> so I'm like oh, this looks good then I built this little embellishment cluster over on the right hand side in the corner I really liked the camera and then the embellishment says savor this moment, I think. And that was perfect because food and savor seemed to just go together for me. And then I put the arrow on there to point over uh, to my mom. And um, I chose, I'm trying to remember what color the arrow is. If it's like that orangey color, I think it is. It's hard to see. Yes, it's like an orangey color. And I chose that because the yay on the other side is that orangey color too. So it just kind of brings the color to both sides of the page. I pulled out this teal little puffy heart. It's from Ellie's Studio. I like to keep a stash of these on hand. And I'm just kind of like, I know I want this to go on here, but where do I put it? I thought about there and then ended up just adding it to the cluster at the bottom, which is cute. I like it. So again, I'm leaving the rest of it blank so my mom can fill it out if and when she wants. And we're going to use the score tape and get it adhered into the album. So after this, I just have a couple more pages left to do in this album. I think I've got two or three, and then I will need to stitch the whole thing together. So if you guys are interested in seeing the next couple pages or and or seeing how I put this album together, how I sew it all together, then uh, make sure you come back in a couple days. I think maybe it's going to be Thursday. <laughs> uh, but make sure you guys come back here and uh, check it out. I think that is going to do it for today, though. So 
thank you guys. Thank you for coming here and hanging out with me while I was putting these pages together today. I hope you guys feel inspired to either work on a travel album or potentially gift an album to somebody or try out this traveler's notebook size. Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.